Greetings, all. Welcome to Aquarian Diary. I'm your host, John Irving. It is December 20th, 2023. This is just a quick update to draw people's attention to something that is very important. It is something I have talked a lot about on my channel here for a very long time. And that is that as of yesterday, December 19th, 2023, Pluto entered 29 degrees of Capricorn, which is the anoretic degree. The very final degree of an astrological sign is considered to be particularly intense because the energies of that sign, the whole 30 degrees, which in the case of Pluto, which began its transit in 2008, is completing that multi-year journey. So what tends to happen, even if you have a planet at 29 degrees in your natal chart, that planet, depending on the sign in the house, will have an exaggerated effect. So Pluto now has moved into the anoretic degree, 29 degrees, where it will be until January 20th, of 2024. So basically a month. As someone who follows the news a lot, quite carefully, everything seems to be very exaggerated right now. It's like the volume has been turned to 11. And especially with respect to the issues that relate to Capricorn, or the 10th house in many ways, as I have articulated in previous episodes. So we're seeing the worst aspects of all of those themes. Whether it is unhinged billionaires, the rise and unprecedented fervency of autocratic right-wing politics and political movements, the structures and institutions of our societies being challenged or having their failures become blatantly evident to us. If you're feeling really discouraged or disappointed right now, which I am in many ways because I find a lot of the things that are happening right now are very disturbing, that is not unusual. The whole point of this transit is to show us the failures and flaws that underpin a lot of our assumptions about these institutions and structures of society, particularly that deal with those in positions of leadership and power. Pluto represents power. So we are seeing basically how the system is corrupt. We now have the former president of the United States, who, by the polls at least, is a leading contender to be the next president again even though he is shockingly inept, unqualified, and is under investigation for criminal behavior on multiple different levels and in multiple different jurisdictions. Again, the point of all this is to show us how desperately those areas of human life and activity need to be reformed, and probably dramatically so, at least if we care about things like democracy. In some ways, it's kind of like just before a new moon, when the light is diminished to its darkest state, before you begin a new cycle. So bear that in mind if you're disturbed by what's happening. These are the darkest hours. But it won't necessarily last, at least like this. It's not that we won't have a lot of work to do, because what happens with Pluto is that it will destroy or undermine things that are no longer valid or that are corrupt and make us all aware of that as part of the process. And then we have to actually go and do all the work to transform and rebirth those areas or themes to renew them and ensure that they reflect the reality that we want legitimately. In the case of all the resurgence of the right-wing stuff, we have to ask what conditions precipitated or allowed that to occur. 
how could this happen? Why did it happen? And how do we prevent that? Or what changes do we need to make? In other words, where did all the anger and resentment come from? And what do we need to do to address those kinds of conditions? Why do people feel alienated? And I've argued that a lot of it is just plain economics. That if you look at the distribution of wealth over the past 50 years, our quality of life has actually been deteriorating. The situation for young people right now is very bleak. It used to be that your children could have a better life than you, and that's not true anymore. And it has to do with economic inequality. And both the right and the left are responsible for allowing that to occur. There may be more blame on the right, who lowered taxes for billionaires, but, for example, it was Bill Clinton who opened up a lot of foreign trade, which offshored a lot of jobs, globalization, etc., etc., etc. So in your personal life, depending on what house Pluto is transiting, the lessons that you've been learning since 2008 with Pluto transiting that house may be coming to a head. It's like there's an exclamation point that is showing you any final flaws that are in need of reform, renewal, and regeneration. And if there was work that needed to be done that wasn't, Pluto can hit very hard. It can actually destroy things to basically clear the ground for a new beginning. Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn one more time next year. That's from September 1st until November 19th of 2024. And then it is done, finished, transiting Capricorn. And it will be in Aquarius for the most part through 2044. That is 20 years. A whole new cycle. And of course, I will put links in the episode description to other episodes where I go into this in more detail. So we shouldn't be surprised that things are off the charts, happening very fast, very intensely. The seeming war between reactionary movements and forces and progressive ones is reaching a climax. And temporarily, at least, it may seem like the progressive forces are on their back foot, but that's only temporary. The last time that Pluto went into Aquarius, which was actually the first time that it went into Aquarius, in any of our lifetimes at least, was from March 23rd of this year until June 11th. And I recall personally that when Pluto went into Aquarius, I felt a huge shift, which I like because it's an air sign. And that suits me much better, personally. And then on June 11th, when Pluto moved back into Capricorn retrograde, I felt kind of the reverse. Like instantly I felt this heavy, weighty energy. Pluto in Capricorn, the ruler of Capricorn, is Saturn. Saturn is a heavy energy that doesn't like to move or shift and is very rigid. And for some people, it can manifest as being very controlling and repressive. And Saturn is not known for being fun at all, actually. It usually means work and concentration and focus and duty and responsibility. And yes, those things are important, of course, but they're not light. They're not entertaining. They're not expansive. It's more of a contracting energy. So this is really important. Again, through January 20th, we're going to be dealing with a lot of really intense energy. We're probably going to continue to see things that occur that are shocking. Again, the rhetoric of Trump recently, which is unparalleled given its scale and implications, that is so reminiscent of what happened in the 1930s in Germany. For many people, it's very shocking. There's roughly 40% of the population that is either authoritarian leaning or capable of being triggered to be an authoritarian. In other words, these tendencies are latent. I'll put a link in the episode description to an episode of Background Briefing that actually just came out yesterday that discusses this a bit more, the psychology of it. 
So there are some people who are hardcore authoritarian. And then there's another segment whose authoritarian tendencies can be triggered under stress or duress. And we are clearly in very stressful times. It appears as if we're going backwards socially. And politically, there's a lot of stuff happening on the right-leaning side of the spectrum, which is quite surprising to a lot of people. But again, that's being triggered, especially for the next month or so. One thing I should point out, recall that I stated that Pluto will make its final retrograde into Capricorn from September 1st to November 19th of 2024. The 60th U.S. federal election will be on November 5th of 2024. Anyone who pays attention to current affairs knows that this election is going to be extremely important for the whole world. That election is occurring when Pluto is at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So it could be very dramatic. It could be a situation where there is kind of like a final face-off between reactionary and progressive forces. It's going to be intense regardless that whole period. But again, it is the very final time that Pluto will be in Capricorn for over two centuries. It's a really big deal. I'll just remind you of one other thing as well. As I've stated in my previous episodes, the last time that Pluto was in Aquarius, which is where we're just about to go, we had the French and the American revolutions. Extremely, extremely important. Aquarius is an air sign. It is all about moving forward and dramatic changes, and it moves very quickly. It's not stuck energy in the same way that an earth sign like Capricorn is. Aquarius is very independent, rational, intellectual. It challenges the status quo, and it generally has very progressive and egalitarian, and that's key, egalitarian values. The right is not egalitarian by definition, which is in stark contrast to the energies of Capricorn and its ruling planet Saturn. That is why, as Pluto is at this critical degree, everything is so polarized and extreme because the energies are very, very different. Mercury is retrograde until January 1st. That adds a bit to the confusion. Jupiter which can represent our philosophy and our higher values and things like higher education and international or foreign-related themes, as well as optimism, has been retrograde since September 4th and doesn't go direct until December 30th. So December 30th, Jupiter goes direct. January 1st, Mercury goes direct. January 20th, Pluto enters Aquarius. There's going to be a lot of shifting energy over the next month. It's a really big deal. And this shift of Pluto from Capricorn into Aquarius is also a very, very big deal. So a lot is going to happen. Things can appear very dark right now. But like I said, in many ways, it's like the dark before the dawn. So hang in there. (laughs) You know, don't, I mean, I, I mean, I find what a lot of things that are happening are just like, jaw-dropping constantly and horrifying. Um, But in many ways, the rebirth cycle is just around the corner. And remember, despite all of the batshit crazy stuff that's happening right now, all of this authoritarian, controlling, dominating, punitive, vengeful, grievance-centered, belligerently-oriented energy, Aquarius is very egalitarian, it's very progressive, it's very socially conscious, it believes in social justice, it is not top-down or hierarchical, it is not tribalistic, because I know a lot of you are like me, that's why you're listening to me. Despite how dark and nasty and negative, and let's face it, what we're really seeing is how our social and political systems have been corrupted by literal criminals, these are criminals who should be prosecuted, 
as far as I'm concerned. They are antisocial, sociopaths, if not psychopaths. They need to be rooted out from our systems of governance and control, whether it's corporate, political, banking, finance, etc. And all these dark money groups that are operating behind the scenes to reshape society for their own personal benefit, all that crap, that energy is in complete conflict with the energy of Aquarius. So just remember that. I know that things look really, really bad right now, but we're going to have that energy of Pluto in Aquarius for 20 years. I'm not saying it's going to be easy or that there isn't going to be battles, but the tide is moving in the direction of a more progressive, egalitarian, and just society for all around the world. It's up to us to root out the criminal and corrupt elements in our systems of governance on a global scale. That is what we are going to be focused on for the next 20 years. And that may mean that there are literal battles that will take place to arrive at that outcome. As far as I'm concerned, and I've said this before too, we shouldn't even be doing business with corrupt regimes or foreign countries that are anti-democratic. A lot of what's happening, I think, geopolitically, is blowback for us compromising our ethics and values and being hypocritical in pursuit of profit or strategic advantage. We could have placed pressures on them to change if they wanted to do business with us, but we did not. Not sufficiently, anyway. And there have been plenty of cases where Western countries literally installed dictatorships or subversively toppled democratically elected governments with horrific outcomes. How much more hypocritical can one possibly be? We have been enabling dictators and autocrats for profit. You can imagine the magnitude of the karma. Gigantic. So hang in there, and like I said, fasten your seatbelts. And don't give up. Don't lose hope, no matter what anyone tells you. One small housekeeping note. If you subscribed to my contact list on my website, you should have received an email which you have to open, and there's a link in it that you click to verify your email address. There are many people who have subscribed to my contact list who did not complete that step. It may have gone into your spam folder or whatever. So if you think you've subscribed to my contact list, but you didn't go through that confirmation process, you may want to try going to my website and adding yourself to my list again, and then be on the lookout for that email. Because if you don't confirm your email, you will not receive any updates. So all the best to you during the holiday season, by the way. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Thanks very much. Again, for more detail, check the episode description for other episodes or articles that are related or that I mentioned. And if you're interested in a reading with me, I'll put a link to that as well. I have a 20% off special on currently. A natal or transit reading makes a great gift, by the way. It's something people won't forget. Many sincere thanks to everyone who supports me, especially my YouTube members. Thank you very much. Take care, all the best, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.